Hello, Mark Ostwald from ADM Investor Services International with some thoughts as we come to quarter end on the performance of uh, the dollar and indeed the US uh, interest rate markets. I start off the, this week um, with a look at uh, global FX rates performance versus the dollar. It's an interesting set of bed, bedfellows at the bottom of the chart. Uh, you've got the bad boys of uh, Brazilian real, treasure, uh, the uh, Turkish lira, a very poor performance from uh, the Polish zloty, uh, along with the yen and the Swiss franc, uh, as we basically decided that we don't need them as safe havens, or rather the dollar replaced them as safe havens. Um, at the top of the chart, obviously, we've got those countries where yield differentials aren't actually widening with the US. And that's why we see the strength there in the Canadian dollar, uh, British pound, and indeed the Norwegian krona. Um, obviously, this was one of the big uh, counterintuitive trades or counter uh, consensus trades of Q1 that the dollar was going to weaken and it didn't. And that's basically what we've seen uh, as a result of the rising US interest rates. Uh, my second chart is uh, indeed of, uh, of US um, Treasury yields, 5, 10 and 30 year. As one can see, uh, really, since uh, about the third quarter, the rise in yields has been fairly relentless. Um, latterly, uh, though, we're getting a, a lot more buy-in from the shorter end rather than just the longer end, which is interesting because it tells us something a little bit about inflation expectations, which I'll come to back in a bit. My third chart today is the US Treasury Total Return Index for um, coupons, um, i.e. not T-bills. Basically, it's a 10-year chart, this one. And the simple point on this is this is one of the worst performances for a quarter for the US Treasury market in the past 10 years. Indeed, one of the worst performances this is in a very, very long time, uh, which clearly um, does a lot of damage to people's portfolios who've been basically very long of that. Um, one can put it down to Biden's spending plans, one can put it down to inflation, rising inflation, uh, but the fact of the matter is the performance has been very poor. Now let's contrast that with my fourth chart, uh, which is uh, a comparison using ETFs, because that's the simplest way of doing it. Um, what we've got here, uh, the brown line is the US Treasury ETF. Um, the white line is the investment grade ETF. And remarkably, as one can see, uh, the high yield ETF has actually basically uh, is not really much change from where it was just before the pandemic last year. That sort of outperformance when you're getting a rise in underlying yields, I don't think is something which is necessarily sustainable and certainly something as we go into Q2, which we're going to have to keep a very, very close eye on. My final two charts are really to um, make a point about what's uh, been happening latterly, uh, particularly during March. Uh, the first one is the US two versus five year spread. And I think the, the simple point here is that while we kept in a, a fairly stable range through much of 2020, we've seen a very, very sharp rise now. And we, we basically are bas uh, we're, we're seeing some unsticking, um, I suppose, of the bottom end of the curve from the Fed's mantra. Um, eminently, the Fed's basically only promising rates for to, to, to be steady for two to three years, as opposed to five years. So it's uh, not surprising to see that pressure emerging there. Um, but it is something which we're going to have to watch very, very closely because there is quite a lot of medium term financing. I think the other point here, and this is basically where my sixth chart and final chart for uh, this week comes in, is to um, basically ask the question, how much of the rise that we've seen in US five-year yields of late is related to inflation? So the final chart is the US five-year yield versus the US five-year break-even inflation rate. And what one can see, particularly during the March period, is the five-year break-even rate has steadied in the 250 to 60 range, while we've steadily seen a rise up to this 92.92% level in the five-year yield. And that, to me, actually smacks far more of the ending of the SLR exemption, um, the supplementary leverage ratio exemption, and suggesting that we're not going to get quite as good sponsorship from the big banks of the US Treasury markets, which will probably see some uh, bid offer spreads widen out and create some additional pressures there. And those are the thoughts for this week.